On February 1st, Google will change the way of doing cold emails in 2024 and beyond. Hey guys, I'm Jake. You've probably heard about Google's new email changes. From February 1st, 2024, not only Google, but another big provider, Yahoo, are releasing new sender requirements. So here is a guide how to survive this spam geddon. As the deadline is approaching, let's make sure you're familiar with all the new requirements. What you'll find in this video is an absolute must to effectively continue sending your emails and avoid Gmail putting your messages in a spam folder. Let me explain what these changes mean. First, let's clear the most important and widely discussed point. Do these changes apply only to bulk senders? Who is a bulk sender, according to Google's criteria? Bulk senders are those who send more than 5,000 messages to personal Gmail accounts in one day. But the new guidelines will apply to anyone sending emails to personal Gmail accounts. So to make it clear, a personal Gmail account is an account ending with gmail.com or googlemail.com. If you send emails to those addresses, regardless of your email service provider, so you can send your emails from Gmail, Google or Office, you need to follow the rules. If you send to Google Workspace accounts, like name at yourcompany.com, Google does not include these addresses in the new guidelines. However, that may be just for now. In the beginning, the new rules also covered Google Workspace accounts, but after some time Google backed off and removed them from the guidelines, leaving only personal accounts. Knowing that Google has already mentioned business accounts in this discussion, you shouldn't be surprised if they make more changes here or even return to their initial idea in the near future. So, to sum it up, if you send to private Gmail accounts, these rules are officially for you. Whether you're a small business owner or a marketer, if you work in recruitment or run a newsletter for your group, you should adjust to the new requirements. So, let's break down the rules all senders must follow. First, you need to have SPF or DKIM email authentication for each of your sending domains. These are the foundations of proper deliverability and Gmail prioritizes them to ensure everyone can trust the source of an email. Use a TLS connection for transmitting email. Major providers like Gmail use TLS already, but if you are using a custom SMTP, you might want to check if they provide this protocol. The important thing is that email connection is safe only when both the sender and the recipient use TLS. Keep spam rates below 0.3% by monitoring them in Postmaster tools. That's the most difficult metric to keep. What it means is if you send 1000 emails per day, only three of them can be reported as spam. Ideally, Gmail's recommended spam rate is below 0.1%, so only one of 1000 emails can be marked as spam. For those sending over 5000 emails daily, you need to set up a DMARC record to establish rules for handling emails that fail SPF or DKIM verification. DMARC has usually been a recommendation, but now it is becoming a necessity. Whether you exceed the 5k number or not, DMARC is always a good option. And maybe you are wondering, what is Google's aim for these new standards? Well, in simple terms, a safer, spam-free inbox for everyone. But if you want to take a closer look at the new rules, we have explained them in a blog post. You can find it linked in the description. Now, let's talk about what happens if you send an email that doesn't meet the requirements. In short, your emails might be blocked or rejected. There's also a higher chance that they'll end up in the spam folder. If emails from your domain are frequently marked as spam, every other email you send is more likely to face the same fate. This affects not just your current campaigns, but your domain's overall condition and deliverability in the long run. Ongoing spam reports lower your domain's reputation and negatively impact your delivery and prevent you from raising delivery issues to Gmail in the future. Now, you know why it's crucial to play by Gmail's new rules. You know the consequences. To keep your sendings on good terms, Woodpecker is stepping up to help you meet the requirements. We already optimized our tool to the new standards to make sure you stay focused on safe and efficient email delivery. Let's start with pricing structure. 
Recently, we modified our pricing model. We've moved away from charging for each email account and shifted to a system where you only pay for the prospects you engage with. You also don't pay per user in Woodpecker, so you can invite all your team members to join the app for free. Just a year ago, it was possible to send 300 emails from one mailbox and achieve open rates of 50 or 75%. It was a general email practice, but recent changes have resulted in much poorer deliverability for anything exceeding 30 to 50 cent messages per day. With this new pricing model, you can add as many email accounts as you want and create more domains to maintain your daily sending volume. More inboxes may also come in handy if one of them gets blocked by Google. We know you aim to be a good sender and a good sender always has a backup. Handling multiple inboxes might sound challenging as you have to spend a lot more time on campaign management. However, Woodpecker Inbox Rotation simplifies things for you. This system automatically manages the sending limits you set for each inbox. If one inbox reaches its limit, another one takes over. So let's see how it works in practice. Suppose your goal is to send 300 emails a day. You can create two domains and set up three mailboxes on each. After warming up each inbox, you create a campaign with six mailboxes, each sending 50 emails a day. This allows you to reach your daily email volume of 300 in a healthy manner. You can check this approach and monitor your sender's reputation in the eyes of Google using Postmaster tools. New Gmail rules mean that the more often you annoy the provider, the more likely you are to be labeled as a bad sender, which can harm the reputation of your domain. This also applies to Gmail sending limits. Exceeding these limits can lead to being blocked for 24 hours when you can't send any email at all. We have a system that works in the background while your emails are being sent. It's called Bounce Shield, and its task is to keep your sending below your provider's limits. You can reduce your account blocks even by 60%. This allows you to send more emails in the long run, as each 24-hour block from the provider is a waste of your potential sending days. Moving on with security requirements. SPF and DKIM are basic records, and most of you probably already set them up. So the job to do here is to check if everything works correctly and is ready for February 1st. To do so, you can use a built-in SPF and DKIM checker. You find it in settings in the domain checkup section, and you can verify your records anytime. If your records are not configured, Check the description for help articles that can guide you throughout the process. All right, let's zoom in on the spam rates. Here's the real deal. It can be challenging to maintain them as low as Gmail recommends. So it's crucial to have this in mind at the early stages of creating a campaign. When creating an email, you have to think about the words that are considered spammy. Or you can use the spam checker, which will flag any issues in your subject line or body text that might activate the spam filters. So you have the chance to adjust it and avoid delivery problems later. Okay, when we send our cold email, its way to the prospect inbox also needs to be clear. You can monitor the health of your sending by checking the ratio of sent to delivered messages in the Woodpecker Deliverability Monitor placed in your Deliverability tab. In general, and especially now, according to the new Gmail rules, the closer together the lines of sent and delivered messages are on the graph, the better. If they come together, it means that all the messages you sent have been delivered. But if you see them drifting apart, it's time to investigate further and take some action. Following the spam rate, don't forget the obvious here. Recipients of your emails may mark your message as spam with just one click, especially if they declined your offer in the first place. With a long prospect list, there is a risk of contacting the same company again. Minding your tight 0.3% spam rate limit, it's better to add their domain to the safety tab. Woodpecker will then blacklist every email address under this domain, helping you prevent unnecessary spam reports. Finally, something probably even the most courteous prospect would mark as spam at some point and it's you sending emails during their after hours or in the middle of the night. Don't do that. Set the delivery time for your campaigns according to the prospect's time zone, so you know the emails will find them well. And don't use this line as an opener for your emails. The chances of your email finding your recipient like that are low, but never zero. But guys, jokes aside, new rules are coming soon, and it's not only Gmail. Yahoo will also introduce similar guidelines on February 1st. And once major providers set a direction, all the others tend to follow. Not complying may have severe consequences and can ban your emails, a scenario you definitely want to avoid. 
Woodpecker is already optimized to help you meet the new Gmail standards. For a precise survival guide, see the blog post linked in the description. And subscribe to our channel as we'll be monitoring the situation and keeping you guys updated during and after the changes. Thank <laughs> you.